Hi, so spacesuits. They come in all different shapes, colors, and sizes, depending on their use case. And when you look at the collective, one spacesuit, typically, at least for me, always stands out. And that's the Apollo spacesuit. And when you really look closer, it's really one item on this Apollo spacesuit that is the most unique, and that's the helmet. The bubble helmet. So I did some research to figure out why did we stop using the bubble helmet? <clears throat> we haven't. And I thought I'd explain it to you because why not? It's an interesting topic, so let's go. This video is sponsored by absolutely nobody. Hey everybody, TJ Cooney from I Need More Space here. Thanks a lot for watching. So the Apollo era bubble helmet. Super practical and impractical at the same time. For nearly a decade before the Apollo program took flight, NASA and the US Air Force were using pressure visors for their high altitude flying and space flights. But for the Apollo program, uh, NASA took a different approach because of the type of mission that they were flying. Uh, NASA had one type of spacesuit designed. It was an IVA and an EVA suit known as the A7L that had the ability to be used inside the spacecraft and outside the spacecraft. In 1965, they started looking at a wide variety of helmet designs to see which one would fit their use case the best. So in 1967, NASA opted for the full bubble helmet manufactured by Airlock Incorporated out of Connecticut. And uh, for a few reasons, uh, it kind of saw it as the one helmet that could somewhat do it all. Uh, it was in, as an IVA helmet inside an intravehicular activity helmet. Uh, it didn't have a sun visor sh shielding around it. So from inside the command module, the astronaut could look around and see all of their gauges and switches and not have anything obstructing their view. From a dimension standpoint, it was the smallest. When compared to other helmets in the competition, they were bigger and heavier. This helmet was also much less complicated. It's a bubble that just attaches to the spacesuit. There's no physical mechanism inside the helmet that's moving that could create issues down the line. And with just the addition of a visor assembly around the helmet, it could be used in EVA scenarios on the moon or just anywhere outside the spacecraft. So it seemed like a win. This helmet concept was used throughout the Apollo program, the Skylab program, and the Apollo Soyuz test project. So the helmet was retired for launch and entry scenarios for some pretty simple reasons. Uh, one of them in an emergency, if the suit is pressurized, it's impossible to remove. The suit is filled with air, and the way the seal worked was it actually pushed the helmet up into the seal. So if the suit pressure is greater than the pressure outside of the suit, you literally cannot remove it. You, you don't have the strength, so the suit would have to be depressurized. Those are extra steps and very precious seconds. So NASA in all their wisdom opted to go back to the pressure visor concept that was tried and true during Mercury, Gemini, and the wide variety of Air Force campaigns. And really the suit only needed to be pressurized for a few minutes during launch and re-entry. So basically the entire lead up time with the old suit in the Apollo program, the astronaut had to have some kind of positive pressure flowing into the suit so they didn't suffocate. So it was a, added a lot of complexities to the scenario. Um, so the new helmet actually, although has although having more mechanisms in the helmet, in the whole workflow of things and crew safety improved things greatly. Now, it wasn't the end for the bubble helmet. The EMU suit used on the space station today is actually still using the same bubble helmets developed from the Apollo program. Uh, they just have a sun visor assembly around them, complete with a camera and light for the astronauts to use. So if you were to actually remove that visor assembly around the helmet, it would be the same bubble helmet that was used during the Apollo program. The future of the bubble helmet is still yet to be seen with the XEMU suit coming online. We will likely see it retired, but it still lives on today. So it's not quite dead yet. I hope you enjoyed this little story. If you want more space news and to see what I'm up to, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at TJ underscore Cooney. And I hope you consider subscribing and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.